The next type of report that I'd like to discuss is an on-demand report that pertains to discrete events in the process, such as the batch events we worked with in the daily batch summary segment. Now, if you remember back to the uh, report we created that was generated on demand using continuous data, the user selected the start and end time of that report using a calendar control. Now, a user might not remember when every batch happened to start or end in the process, so it would be more ideal if they could just select a batch ID from a list uh, and then Excel Reporter could figure out the start and end time automatically. Now, how can that be done? It's done through a concept that Excel Reporter refers to as uh, event frames. And an event frame is a record that sits in a database table uh, or can be otherwise produced by a database query that represents all of the key information about the batch required to generate a report. For example, the start time of the batch, the end time, product ID, lot code, machine operator, really anything about the batch that you need in order to make a report about that batch. Now, how can an event frame be generated? Some HMI SCADA systems can generate event frames um, on that side of things. An Excel reporter would just connect to a database being produced by that SCADA system. Excel Reporter can also produce event frames uh, using a feature called Analytic Multi Snapshots, uh, which unfortunately is outside of the scope of this video, which you can read more about uh, in the user manual here. Uh, for the sake of keeping the discussion high level, I'm just going to connect to a database that contains some event frames already. And you can check out what I'm doing here uh, and follow along uh, with the same database. It's actually included in the product. So if I go into the project uh, connectors, I add a new connector, I can select a database, uh, Microsoft Access. We need a database type connector to feed this on-demand batch list concept. And the database I'm going to connect to, we'll call this event frame since that's what we're pulling out of it. The database that I'm connecting to sits in the Excel reporter, uh, XLR demo project in the data folder. It's called DB Data 9. So I'll test the connection to that. Finalize the connector there. And the next thing I need to do is build a query against that database, which is going to feed me all the event frames. So I'll go to the Tools tab of Project Explorer. I'll create a new connector group under the event frames connector. Uh, for this data, I don't need to cross tabulate anything, so I'll use a standard SQL query and I'll select the TBLSM table, which is uh, the type of table that would be produced by an Excel reporter analytic multi-snapshot. Now I'll go into the columns area and I'll select start date time, end date time. With a multi-snapshot, you can have up to four values uh, associated with an event. So we'll pick uh, value one, value two, and value three, which if we preview this, you can see represent a uh, product ID, lot ID, and an operator on the machine during the batch. And of course, you can see we have the start and end times of the batch there as well. Now, if I go, I save this. I'll call this one batch list. And I'll go into the template studio and create a template that utilizes this batch list. So I'll go back into home. I'll go to studio. I'll create a new template here call this one batch dashboard and then I'll base it on an existing uh, workbook I have in the system just so you don't have to watch me sit here and configure headings and charts and formatting and all that kind of basic Excel stuff. So I'll come back out to my desktop templates batch and then dashboard and this uh, dashboard is basically going to show us uh, some summary KPIs over the course of whatever batch we select, and it's going to trend some of the KPIs as well. How does the template work? Well, if we go uh, into the sheets down here and we unhide the data sheet, this is a common uh, Excel design approach, if you're familiar with Excel, to put all your data on a raw data sheet and then uh, have your dashboard uh, just contain formatting and reference formulas. So what we're going to do is stick an Excel reporter data connection onto the data sheet, which is then going to uh, drive the actual dashboard sheet that we're displaying. How do we add data into a template in Excel reporter? We use the connect menu, which allows you to map uh, queries and data coming back from your connectors into locations in the template. 
So for this one, we're going to select the historian connector. We're going to add a new group. I want to get timed interpolations uh, from the historian, so I'll actually use uh, summary values rather than raw values. And then I'll select the tags that are indicated here in these column headings. So it looks like we have uh, mixer, extruder, and reactor tags in here. and reactor then we want interpolated and then we want to define the time frame of this uh, so if we're going to sync it up to the results of that uh, event frames database group we made we need to set the type to variable and because if you recall that uh, table had two fields for start time and end time we just want to sync this up as just two variables so not the separate variables for the times and we'll just call this start date and end date and then we'll get five minute uh, interpolations between the start and end of whatever time ends up being passed through from that event frame I'll save this group I'll name it after the template which is a default convention and then I'll put it into this cell here on the data sheet uh, and I'll use the uh, placement type uh, insert at end which is uh, going to stretch this little area you see here bordered in blue so that all the formulas uh, that reference that area and we can see that here this formula you see references uh, row 15 and 16 all of these formulas will stretch automatically if that data is being inserted there so they'll pertain to the exact number of rows that we need for that batch report now the next thing we want to connect here is uh, the data that represents the uh, product lot operator start and end so we we'll go back into connect and we'll use the uh, expressions connector this time and I'll use the expression say for uh, product ID there and we'll put this one direct since it's not uh, going to insert multiple rows we'll put it direct in C4 and then in C5 we'll put the lot ID C6 will have the operator And then we'll have the start and end. Start date. Oops, if I could type correctly. We'll have the start date in J4. And then we'll have the end date. In J5. Now let's take a look at how this is going to work in uh, in preview. So if we go uh, up to the preview menu at the top of the design studio, you can see we have a calendar control here because I've defined start and end. And then if I just type in a product ID here and a lot ID, since we haven't mapped these to the database yet, and we'll give an operator name, and I refresh the data sheet, you can see that the report is populated. Uh, we have all the information that we entered here and it pertains to what we selected uh, in all of these controls so we're halfway there we have the data that we need to uh, map into this report now we just need to sync it up uh, to the event frames uh, database group that we created a moment ago so in order to remap all of those variable inputs to the database list we use the on-demand designer and in here we can see there's a lot of things already that uh, aren't really the way we want them for this report. Uh, for one, it's asking us to select which uh, worksheet we'd like to update. We know that the data is going onto the data sheet, so we don't really need that. I'm going to remove it. Excel Reporter puts these things in place uh, automatically when you add variables. Uh, and then on the Actions tab, this is what happens when you click that Refresh button in the client. We'll just set this to always update the data sheet rather than that worksheet variable. Now we can get rid of uh, product ID, lot ID, and operator as well, and we'll get rid of start and end date. 
and then we'll add all this stuff back under the database category. So we'll say start date is going to come from a, a database query. It's the batch list that we made before. It's going to be the start date time column. And we'll use this as the driving uh, filter. We'll make it a single selection so they can only pick one item on the list. And we'll add it in. We'll do the same thing for end date and end date time. And we'll do the same thing for the product ID as value 1, the lot ID as value 2, if you recall the results of that uh, query. And then we'll do uh, operator as value 3. Now we can save that, we'll close this, and we'll go back into the preview. And now you can see it's actually giving us a list of all of these uh, batches that we've executed in the process. And I can select a different one and refresh the report. And everything gets generated for that particular batch. So the next thing that we can do is we'll go back. I don't know why this sheet is scrolled down like this. Let's put it back the way it should be and save it. And then I'll hide the data sheet here as well. So we'll save the template. And now we can check this out from the web client. If I come back in there, we'll have the batch dashboard template. You notice the same controls are, are loaded in the web client. And the same report is displayed as a web page here. So this is a great way if you want to drive a report uh, not necessarily on a uh, calendar control to select the start and end, but actually some piece of information that's more meaningful to the user, like a, a batch ID or a, an operator name, then we can do that using the concept of event frames and the concept of database panels inside of the on-demand designer in the template. One final thing we'll take a look at with this uh, template is if I shrink my browser down to the size of a phone, we actually see what Excel Reporter's web portal looks like uh, on a mobile phone if you were to get at this uh, by machine name or IP over your, your Wi-Fi. So if I go back into Batch Dashboard, notice that everything is a single scrolling column now. I can still see all the same event frames. And I refresh, we actually get a totally different layout of the report just by opening it on a phone. Uh, the report is responsive to the display type that's used to access it. How does that work? Uh, well, for that, I suggest you check out our workshop on uh, on-demand and mobile reporting.